Welcome back to another of our in-depth videos on pathfinding. Uh, in this video, we're going to be talking about something called Dijkstra's algorithm, which is yet another optimization and improvement on the pathfinding algorithms we've looked at before. In our last video, we talked about how uh, doing diagonal movement on the grid resulted in some weird paths for our pathfinding algorithm. Right? Our algorithm is supposed to be finding the shortest path, which would be a straight line between the X and the home. But it came up with this weird diagonal path. And it turns out that our algorithm is doing what it thinks is right. And it is finding the fastest path, or the shortest path, the amount, shortest amount of movement. And that's because diagonal movement isn't the same as orthogonal movement, up and down, left and right. And the reason for that has to do with a little bit of trigonometry. So to review that real quick, when you move on a grid horizontally or vertically, if this is, this is a distance of one, then a diagonal movement by the Pythagorean theorem is a movement of distance of a square root of two, which is around 1.4. So moving from here to here, if you move, if you take this step in the same amount of time as you take this step, then you're moving you know, around 40% faster when you go a diagonal. So it's quicker to get somewhere moving diagonally than it is moving horizontally and vertically. And we need a way to compensate for that and make the cost of movement when you move diagonally higher than the cost of moving horizontally and vertically. And so we need to introduce the concept of a movement cost to our grid. So what that's going to allow us to do is not only say that moving this much takes is a cost of 1, but moving this much is a cost of 1.4, but we can also make areas of our map that cost more to move through. Like imagine this was a map that had a forested area or, um, or a swamp, right? Moving through the swamp will cost you more than moving through the open grassy field. And that will allow us to calculate paths that are not the shortest geometric distance, but the shortest distance based on how much it costs to move, right? If, you're, if your character can only move 10 squares in a turn, then you know, 10 squares running along grass is going to get you a lot farther than uh, the swamp where each, each square costs you five to move. So you can only move two squares in a turn. Right? And you'll see what that means as we start implementing it. So the first thing we're going to need is we're going to need some more information in our grid. So our grid is not just going to be the, the map, the squares where the walls are, but we also need to introduce the concept of costs. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the square grid uh, class and we're just going to extend it to the concept of a weighted grid. So we'll call this weighted grid. Oops, grid. And this is a this is just a square grid class and we're going to extend it. Okay. And so what this is going to do is when we um, when we initialize it and give it a width and height just like we do right, we will just call the super class, which is the super class is whatever class this is a child of, right? Square grid. So we'll call the super in it with the width and the height. And all that's going to do is go ahead and run this code. So it'll go ahead and build the connections and the walls and the set the width and height. And we don't have to repeat that code in our weighted grid. Okay, and then we're just going to add to this that there is going to be a dictionary called weights. And weights is just going to be a dictionary that's going to have, um, you know, inside it, it's going to have keys that are like the grid location, and then the value will be some cost, right? The weight, the cost it, it costs to move into that square, right? So each square will have a We'll have one of those. So we'll have a, a set of weights. And then we need to be able to return to be able to query that and ask, what's the cost to move into this square? 
So what we'll do is, all right, when you ask for the cost, you say what, what square you're standing on and what square you want to move to. Okay, and we have two ways of calculating cost, right? We want to be able to look at the tile and see is it a swamp tile or a forest tile and cost more to move into, right? Which is going to be contained in this dictionary, that data. But we also want to account for the orthogonal versus diagonal, right? So if we're moving horizontal, we're going to get one cost. If we're moving diagonal, we're going to get another cost. And that's going to be added to whatever the terrain cost of the tile will be. So first we just need to see if we're moving um, if we're moving diagonally. Okay. So if the one we're moving to minus from so if we're just so if the distance is one oops that's a function got my parentheses if if that's a if it's a distance of one, then we know we're moving horizontally or vertically, right? So what we're going to give back is whatever in the self dot weights. We're going to check the two node, right, and return zero if that isn't in the weights list, right? So if we're moving into a square that isn't doesn't have a weight assigned to it, the default weight will just be zero, and then we're going to add the cost for moving horizontally or vertically, right? Otherwise, what we're going to return, I'll just duplicate that and move it down. Otherwise, what we're going to return is the cost plus the cost of moving diagonally, right? So if we move straight, we add one. If we move diagonally, we add 1.4. But then we're getting, you know, fractions and things. And so it's very common practice when working with these kind of algorithms to just make these whole numbers and call the orthogonal cost 10 and the diagonal cost 14, right? The ratio is still the same, but then we're dealing with nice integers uh, for everything. Okay, so now we know what the cost is to move and we are done with our, we've, we've, we're done with what we needed to add to our grid to account for movement costs. So now when we start running our search, we'll be able to, when we look at the neighbors of any, of any square, we'll be able to get the cost of that movement. And then we want to prioritize by that cost, right? We want to try the lower cost movements first, right? We want to give them priority. And that means that when we're doing our search and we're adding nodes to the frontier, we want them to be sorted by that priority so that we take them off in that same priority order. And so to do that, we need to use something called a heap queue. Okay, and we can import that. It's another useful thing in the Python standard library. And all a heap queue is, is it's, it's like a list, except that each item in the list has a priority assigned to it, and it automatically orders them, I should say it's not like a list, it's, it's like a queue. It's like the queue we worked with before, where you, when you push items onto one end and you pop them off the other end. But what the heap queue does is each item is assigned a priority and it automatically, in an optimized way, keeps them ordered by that priority so that whichever one you pull off the end is gonna be the one with the highest priority. And whenever you push one on, it gets put wherever it needs to be in that priority list. So, so we can use that, but the, the, the heap queue can do lots of other things that we don't need to deal with. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a, we're going to make a, a class to make it easy to work with the prior, the heap queue. Okay. So we'll call this a priority, a priority queue. Okay. And Okay, all this priority queue is going to have in it is a list of nodes. Okay, and so we have two operations that we're going to want to be able to do to this queue. We're going to want to be able to put things on it, and we're going to want to be able to get the highest priority item off of it. 
So we'll define both of those operations. We'll call it put when we want to put something on. And we just give it some node and some uh, cost, right? That's going to be our priority. And the command to have the heap queue at it is heap push. And you just tell it what heap we're using. Well, that's the nodes list. And what are we pushing? We're pushing the cost and the node. Okay. So each time you add something to the heap queue, you give it a tuple of the cost, the priority, which is the priority in our case, and the node that you want to add. And again, every time you push one of these on, it's going to take this cost and order them by that in ascending order. So that the highest priority is the lowest cost. Right, so a cost of zero is going to be preferred over a cost of 10. And then we need to be able to get whatever the next one is in the list. And that's just heap Q, heap pop. And if you what heap, the heap is self.nodes. And that's just going to give you whichever the highest priority one is, the next one on the queue. And it's going to pull it off. And it's going to give us back this. So we want to actually get, I only care about what node is the next in the priority. I don't care about the cost. I just used that to sort them. And we're going to return that. Okay. So now we are able to get it off. And then I'm going to add one more uh, method on here. Uh, called empty, which just lets us check, gives us a true or false whether the queue is empty or not. That way we know we're when we're done with our search, right? We only go until the frontier is empty. When the frontier is empty, there's no more searching to do. So we're just going to return however long that is and compare it with zero. If it's equal to zero, then we're going to return true. If it's not, then we're going to return false. Okay, and that's our priority queue ready to start talking about our algorithm. And when you do a search through a grid using weights, the go-to algorithm for that is called Dijkstra's algorithm, named after the computer scientist who first formulated it. Uh, you know, and you can look here on um, Wikipedia, there's a great article about it with all sorts of detail and a little overview of in pseudocode of what the what the algorithm is, and you know that's what we're gonna that's what we're gonna implement. It's gonna look very similar to what we've done before, with just the addition of using those costs to prioritize what order we look at everything. Okay, so now we can start implementing our algorithm. It's gonna go right here in this Dijkstra search function I've created, and. So what I'm going to do to spare you watching me type it all is I'm going to paste it in here and just go over what's different from what we've done before. Okay, so again, we have a frontier. This time it's going to be the pri priority queue object. And we're going to put the start node on it with a cost of zero because obviously it costs zero to move to the square you're already on. And then we're going to keep track of the path just like we've done before. That's going to be that uh, dictionary full of unit vectors pointing in the direction that you're supposed to move in so we can build our little list of er uh, our little image of arrows uh, to show the path on the on the screen and then the cost uh, is going to keep track of what the cost is to move to each square as we look at them okay and so again we're going to just loop through as long as the frontier isn't empty and just keep getting the next one on the list to look at and this is because it's a priority queue, the next one we get is always going to be the one with the lowest cost that's on the frontier. So we'll always be looking at the lowest cost first. And if we find our goal, we're going to stop. Right? If you want to, like we did in the first video, uh, make explore the whole map and get all the paths from everywhere, you could leave this part out. Uh, but we're going to do the early exit thing and, and stop if we find our goal. And then we just start looking through the neighbors, right? We get the list of neighbors, um, and then we're going to calculate the cost. The cost is whatever the cost is so far, right, that we've got so far, plus whatever the cost is to move to the next square, right, using our cost function that we built into our weighted grid. 
All right, that's going to return the, the 10 if you're moving horizontally or vertically, and the 14 if you're moving diagonally. All right? If it's not in the cost, if it's not in that cost dictionary, then we haven't looked at it yet. But we're also going to check and see if it's if it is already in the dictionary, but we found a lower cost. Right? So depending on what direction you come from, it might cost less to move into the square than it did the first time we looked at it from a different neighbor. Right? So we want to make sure we're using the lowest one. So if we find that we haven't looked at it before or we found a lower cost, then we're going to update those values and put it and put that neighbor into the frontier with that with that priority. And then the last thing we do is add that direction vector in there. Okay? And that's all we need to do. So very similar to the breadth first search, just the addition of these costs. So now I just made sure that my graph is a weighted grid and I'm calling that function on it. And when we run this, you'll see we are going to get much nicer paths. We will use diagonal when diagonal makes sense, right? And we'll go through holes, but we'll also get very nice smooth paths through our map right, that look very nice and are going to be the shortest paths. Okay, so our diagonal movement is working really well. Let's look at what happens if our weighted grid has some terrain in it, right? We've given some values to some tiles, some weights to move into them so that they cost more to move through. And so our costs are going to vary, not just be the diagonal and horizontal. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go down here and I'm going to remove the walls for the moment. Right, so I'm just going to comment this out so we don't have the walls. And I'm going to add in a list of tiles that I'm calling terrain. And I'm going to stick those all in the weights dictionary with a value of 15. So it's going to any of these tiles are going to cost instead of 0 to move into, they're going to cost 15. Right? Instead of 0 plus the horizontal or diagonal movement cost, they're going to cost 15 plus that. Okay? And I've also, updated the draw, um, I've also updated the draw function so that we'll see them drawn in a foresty color. And so what that's going to do is that's going to look like this. Okay? So if I put my start here, you can see the shortest path is now avoiding going through those forest tiles because they cost more, right? If you're inside it, well, we got to go through them. So it's going to find a place where it can go through the least number of those forest tiles. But if you're on the opposite side of the forest, it's quicker to go around than it is to go through because of the movement cost, right? And depending on what you make that movement cost, you can make it even more painful to walk through and more something to avoid. Okay, And that's it. That is our Dijkstra search all working the way we want it. And now the next question becomes, how do I avoid having to search the whole map? Right? Because if it's a big map, it's a lot of tiles to look at. And I'm exploring all this stuff over here when I really don't need to, right? And so the next step is going to be to give a little bit of intelligence to this search by prioritizing not just the movement cost, but prioritizing the direction. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and learned a little bit more about pathfinding. And I'll see you in the next video when we start talking about optimizing our search.